To defeat an enemy, you must know them. Not just their battle tactics, but their history, philosophy, art. Welcome to the Chiss Ascendancy Podcast. Well, we were just here. (laughs) Um, Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Chiss Ascendancy. This is our weekly bonus episode, Mandalorian Review, chapter, my God, 14? 14? Narshada. (laughs) <laughs> um the jedi yeah and uh wonder who that was talking about yeah who was that i saw so many posts that were like this is your friendly neighborhood reminder that ahsoka is not a jedi and i was like well dave filoni says that she is <laughs> so your argument's pretty much invalid at that point um so we're talking about the jedi the most recent episode of the mandalorian we're recording this a little bit late. Usually this comes out on Saturdays, but it's coming out on Monday because obviously we're all separated for Thanksgiving and such. And uh, and But we have to talk about this. We can't just skip it. All right? Uh, so we're going to try to keep on focus because there's a lot, a lot to unpack. Yeah. First segment, overall thoughts. Here's where we're going to get hung up because <laughs> there's a lot. Go ahead. You begin. I just... I was on Xbox Live with my friend mm-hmm. Friday night. He's like, did you see it? And I was like, what do you think? Mm-hmm. And I said, I'd just gotten all that I ever wanted mm-hmm. out of this episode of Mando. Mm-hmm. All that I was hoping for. Everything that I wanted that we talked about yes. from the get about what could possibly happen this season, which I would like to say... Called it! ahead of the game. <laughs> I, this is the second or third time this season that we've said, I think this, you know, I can remember talking about the first episode and I was like, man, it'd be really cool. You know, we talked about Cobb Vanth early on. I had people after the first episode going, dude, thank you guys. Thank you and Sam and Adam so much because I didn't even know who Cobb Vanth was. There was no reason I knew who that was. And uh, I knew mm-hmm, who he was and mm-hmm. I went back and rewatched the episode or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's just so rewarding because five years ago. Mm-hmm. When the first Aftermath book came out, when The Force Awakens was in theaters, and I read it. Corn on the Cobb Vanth. Corn on the Cobb Vanth. And there he was. And uh, I can remember going through my my trading cards, because we were talking about the Darth Maul cards weeks ago, mm-hmm. and I was like, man, a crate Dragon would be sick. Mm-hmm. And I posted it that night on my Fett Ventures profile, mm-hmm. and I was like, these are two really cool things. And then, boom, Boba Fett and Crate Dragon, episode one. Uh, just some really cool stuff. And then for us to say... Ahsoka, we like Ahsoka. You know, she's cool. But here's here's where we're getting down yeah. to. Ahsoka, Ahsoka is nothing more or less to me right now than a bridge to Grand Admiral Thrawn. Oh, mama. <laughs> mama. Oh, yeah. I wish Boss Nass was here. Is that him? Boss Nass? <laughs> I was so freaking excited, bro. We, so obviously we're brothers. We were at our mom's house in a little old rinky dink town called mason texas we were about six hours away from houston and we were sitting in uh you know her guest room or whatever watch the mandalorian and uh you were sitting in a chair over here i was sitting in a chair over here and ahsoka's fighting the what was the name of that lady magistrate the magistrate uh, of cordova i want to say elspeth something like that yeah and she's, you know, where is your master? And you said, who's her master, you think? And it's I like was like, it's got to be somebody you know, important. It's got to be somebody important, right? And I was thinking, man, well, the only person that we've talked about at all so far is Gideon. But I was like, I, I guess it could be Gideon, you know? But he seems kind of removed from this area, you know? Mm-hmm. He seems, he's, he's got things he's focused on. And then Ahsoka says, where is Grand Admiral Thrawn? And I was actually wearing the hoodie at the time. So don't forget, you can go on Tee Public and buy your merch. <laughs> we've actually sold... Two or three Grand Admiral shirts or masks or whatever. So here you go. You can have the name of the podcast and Grand Admiral Thrawn's ranking badge right there on hoodie uh, funsies. And so I was wearing this. We're eating Thanksgiving leftovers. We got pie. Where is Grand Admiral Thrawn? I almost dropped my pie fork. 
I literally got up and walked out of the room. <laughs> and hurried back in because I didn't want to miss anything. But I was like, what what did who what did she just say? What did what? What did she say? What? <laughs> so overall thoughts. I just heard the rule just now. <laughs> What? What? Um, overall thoughts, amazing episode. Um, I knew it was going to be good when it started, and we were like, okay, it's called the Jedi. Is that a runaround because Ahsoka's not going to show up, and it's going to be some rando? We think it's going to be Ahsoka. Dave Filoni's directing. Yeah. The stars align. We knew something big was coming when we and, were teeing up to this moment all season long, and Dave Filoni's directing. Right. And it was, what, 52 minutes long? Right. And so the episode was like, dun dun. And as soon as it opens up, Ahsoka's like, pew, we do lights. Here. So like, I remember looking at you and go, where well, there she is. Well, there it is. <laughs> right off the bat. So that's how I knew it was going to be a heavy hitting episode. Right. She wasn't even the reveal. She, she was... wasn't even the reveal, bro. She was the tea time, bro. She was there. And so uh, Rosario Dawson did a great job. Mm -hmm. And um, I have minor complaints, but. The head tails? Yeah, the head tails. Okay, so. Also, the way um, the lightsabers, the way she held her lightsabers. Mm -hmm. Also, that her lightsabers had curved hilts. That is mm -hmm. not the case in Clone Wars. But that's how they were in Rebels. Or is it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so it was cool. I did love the callback to how she lights them against each other mm -hmm. in Rebels. That was cool to see that again. Uh, of course, the lightsabers is sick. Yeah. Um, Fun fact, if you didn't know this, that's actually, it's in Rebels, but it's actually a callback to the Ahsoka novel. Um, mm. It's when she's kind of struggling with her identity, and they talk about how um, Sith bleed the crystals. Yeah, that's where that concept came about, and I think. And then, um, basically, she did something light side version-ish, and because she wasn't a Jedi, and she hadn't uh, established uh, that type of force... Mm -hmm. bond with the crystals they lost their color and they were white yeah it was really cool because the concept is that uh in legends sith had synthetic crystals right. because they had more synthetic cutting power crystals yeah. <laughs> it's funny because they their main concern is the cutting power right very sith like i don't care if it's real does it hurt more you know so they have synthetic but in now in canon the concept is they actually take a crystal that starts with a blue or a green or, you know, obviously in a very rare case, a the, purple well, they're or an orange. Technically within canon now, neutral color until they make a bond they, with the yeah, Jedi. Yeah, yeah, So they take the, the colored crystal from a Jedi and they, they break it to their will as a Sith. Mm -hmm. and it bleeds it literally bleeds in their hand mm -hmm. and that's in the kylo what ren comic yeah that's how you know how powerful kylo ren is because he didn't just bleed his he bled it and broke it uh so that was cool but um anyway, let's stay focused standout moments i'm not doing my overall thoughts oh, okay my bad uh <laughs> i really enjoyed it it started off hot um and even though there were character building moments between ahsoka and baby yoda also known as Grogu. Yeah, freaking. So on. that was cool. We saw Ahsoka. We got freaking Mandalorian Beskar Spear, which was freaking sick. We got uh, HK droids, HK 80s, I want to say. 87? 87. 87, which was super dope because H, uh, HK, HK 47, 47. that's why. Uh, HK 47 is Revan's droid. Yeah. Um, he's the one that calls humans meat bags. Uh, so that was, for me, that was really cool to see one of those I on screen. I think that was the first time that we used in the Star Wars community. Say it again? The term meat bag. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's the first time it was, it was used. Uh, so that was really cool to see an HK droid. Um, you had the very Western, very samurai show-off, or mm -hmm. showdown. It was cool because you had the samurai style with Ahsoka and... Uh, the other lady, and then you had the Western style mm -hmm. between Homeboy from, I don't know if you recognized him, but he's from Alien, the Alien movie Terminator. and from Terminator. So he was a big character. Would you like to know something about me? Go ahead. I've never seen either of those movies. Alien or Terminator? Oh my God, dude. Pretty good. Michael Ben. He's also in the Matrix, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. I knew. I have like, seen those. Yeah, yeah. So he was very cool. I wish that he we could have seen him do some stuff because mm -hmm. you could tell he was meant to be like a big bad. Well, and um, I thought it was cool. Somebody else, you sent me somebody else's Star Wars story, but when we were watching or Instagram story, but mm -hmm. when we were watching, I was like, this guy reminds me of Ringo from mm -hmm. Tombstone. Mm -hmm. And so somebody else had made that same comparison. Right. I don't well, Ringo, he's talking to Doc Holliday from the mm -hmm. movie Tombstone, and he says, "My quarrel's not with you, Holiday." 
and that character says, I don't have any problem with you, Mandalorian. It was almost like a direct pull, so that was very, very cool. Filoni and Favreau are very, very good about that. Mm -hmm. Um, Filoni in the Two Sons episode of Maul and Obi-Wan fighting, everybody was like, why was that so short? And it was like, you need to realize where they're at mentally Yeah. and also watch this samurai film. Yeah. So that was very cool. I also would like to mention that I pulled that comparison before he said yeah, that Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I was on it. Um, and, uh, man, just some very, very cool Al-Qaeda. stuff. And, uh, okay, so we'll go on forever. Number two, standout moment. Where to begin? Where to um, begin? There's at least three to me. Baby Yoda's name, Grogu. Mm-hmm. The child. The child. We now have a name. We can just get a little piece of duct tape. Grogu. Like, little no, little name tag on his little uh, knapsack there. My name there. is Grogu. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know how you see people cover up people's jerseys? They don't want to buy a whole new jersey, so they'll just put, you know. That'd be funny. Um, we got the Beskar spear, which was freaking sick. Mm-hmm. We got Mando having Ahsoka dead to rights. He had her dead to rights. He could have killed her if he wanted to. Because whenever he had her... With the that was a cool callback to yeah. Boba and, and Luke. Um, totally could have blasted her right. In the he face. didn't. He didn't. He could have burned her. Can he we could talk have about how her? Ahsoka definitely wouldn't be heavier than Mando in his full regalia? Yeah, Beskar is supposed to be super heavy, and she was like, "Watch this, I'm seventy pounds." <laughs> you know, and, and that happened. And I told my friend about it, and he's like, "Use the force," and I was like, "That's not how the force works." <laughs> yeah, I was I like, mean, "The only force she was using was the force of gravity." Yeah, it shouldn't have worked. Like I don't that. even think with the momentum that she was pulling. No, yeah, no, there's no but way. Anyways, um, um, he but he even then yeah. he detached and she was like here and he already had his gun out he and was did her. like this. He could have had her. Um, we got to see her force training the baby. We got to see a deeper uh, look into the bond between Mando and Grogu because we get we had like Grogu's force, backstory. Right, we get Grogu. He was backstory. in the Jedi Temple. Yeah, we never knew that before. Um, and then, of course, the to me, the biggest moment of all... Of all time! The, the reintroduction of Grand Admiral Thrawn. Yeah, other than the gospel. <laughs> this is the most significant thing that's the ever happened. The greatest story ever told. Yeah. Um, oh my god, dude. The, so, okay, seeing Ahsoka, that was huge. Seeing her live action. Right. Stuff like that is a really big deal. Well, and it's funny because, like, that's... For most people, that's what they care about. Yeah. And I can respect that. There's a lot of Ahsoka fans. I'm not a huge Ahsoka fanboy. I feel like there are greater things we got out of the Clone Wars that I choose to focus on. Yeah. But it's funny to me that they would almost, in my mind, o- uh, overshadow her in her own episode by mentioning Thrawn. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Oh, for sure. Thrawn is the more important character. Let's talk about the fact that Ahsoka has one novel to Thrawn's set eight coming up yeah well here's the thing thrawn nine if you count the one where there was fake thrawn fake thrawn the hand of thrawn duology mm-hmm. so that'll be ten yeah um and also there is mention of thrawn in uh survivor's quest by timothy zahn um so here's the thing <laughs> don't worry i'm not breaking what's the about? uh listen Ahsoka is a cool character. It's the book review of all Obviously, time, very, care. very cool. But Thrawn, I don't want to lose any love here from folks, but to me, Thrawn saved Star Wars in the early 90s. Yeah, Air of the Empire brought attention back. Okay, because what? We didn't have any Star, War, any Star Wars content for I mean, almost we had 10 like, years. What, the Star Wars Christmas special? No, no, that was. That was before Return of the Jedi. Okay. So, so Return of the Jedi is in 84. Thrawn was in, I want to say, 90 or 91. 91. So six or seven years. Yeah. And b- people were saying Star Wars was dead. And then we got episode one in 99? Yes. It was revered, right? Right. Wow, Star Wars. Remember Star Wars? Yeah. Oh, but, I remember Star Wars. But, I remember T.T. I love it. Oh, I love you, Maka. But remember... Uh, I remember uh, reading or listening to a, a, an interview with people who were talking about, they interviewed bookstore uh, owners because mm-hmm. before Barnes & Noble and stuff, you had to go to a local bookstore. Yeah. And it was before Amazon, obviously. And people were driving. I'm not even kidding you, bro. People were calling bookstores three and four hours away. Do you have Heir to the Empire? Okay, don't you freaking sell that book. I'm four hours away. I'm coming to you. Mm-hmm. Driving two, three, four hours to get this book because it was new Star Wars. Yeah. And 
Thrawn was a character that led by he's example. He's a, in a very compelling character. Yes, and uh, so compelling, dude. I remember seeing. I remember watching the Rebels trailer for season three mm -hmm. and watching people's reactions. Dude, there's one he cried. He goes, "Thank you." Yeah, it was a guy named um, Dash Star, and he would always say, "Greetings, my name is Dash." And he would hold. He would open up a lightsaber in front of the camera, and he. I always loved watching his reviews. He's an Australian guy, so he has a cool voice. And uh, he, the, and, you know, what our buddy Mark Thompson has done for the beginning of our episodes, mm -hmm. but to defeat an enemy, you must know them. That was not what he sounded like before, mm -hmm. but the eloquence yeah. with which it was spoken, I was like, that's Ron, that's freaking Thrawn. And, uh, dude, the guy instantly started crying. Mm -hmm. I think that's Thrawn, uh, which was freaking cool. Uh, so, anyways, Ahsoka is a great character but right. i feel like thrawn has done more for star wars overall that's just my opinion um but bro we're called the chiss ascendancy for crying out loud what do you want from us <laughs> what do you want from me the chiss ascendancy podcast you're tuned in i've got a freaking thrawn rank badge right here and this is one of my two jackets that i have this on <laughs> um but standout moment for me obviously was thrawn being introduced something, you know one thing means something, he's alive right this whole time we've been like he's probably out there right he's out there right, right. like you know like, I'll, sometimes I'll just be lying awake at night, and because I don't have anyone to calmly and reassuringly cradle me back into sleep, and I'm just there staring <laughs> off into the great abyss until sleep overtakes me. Mm. You know those moments? Yeah. I'm just sitting there, and I'm like, man, he's probably alive. You know, and that's 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 how I cover myself. That's enough like to put back you back to sleep. sleep. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, standout moment for me, obviously, huge stuff. Ahsoka... Baby Yoda's name, his backstory was really big. The fact that Ahsoka cannot train him because his bond as father to son to yeah. the Mandalorian is too strong. That was freaking ballin'. Um, the huge, huge stand-up moment is the Thrawn reveal. Right. And then a smaller moment that we can't let go of, that we can't let it be overshadowed, is the mention of Tython. Yes. Going back to Expanded Universe, um, Jedi Temple, take him to the top of the mountain, and I guess it's like a cell phone tower for Force users. Like a uh, light side dark mark. Yeah, whatever. All the Jedis get a scratchy arm all over the galaxy and they uh, do their darkness oh, yeah, to get yeah, there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's very interesting. So the concept when we're leaving the episode is take him to Tython, which I guarantee you we're not going to get there next episode. Yeah. I bet we don't get there till next season. Yeah, probably not. But Or maybe like the last episode. Mm-hmm. Um, does this feel like a video game to anybody else? Like you I've, get there I've read and then, that. You know, it's like, all right, your next quest, Tython. Yeah. And you're like, well, son of a mother. And then, yeah. you know, you can see that part of the map now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I've read about that. Uh, Skeleton Astronaut has said that. He's like, I feel like I'm playing a video game, but I like a video game, so I'm happy for it. Yeah. Um, so we're going to Tython, get to the top of the mountain, and here's the other thing is he chooses his own path there, mm -hmm. whether he wants to be a Jedi or not. Right. I thought it was cool that he's like, he doesn't understand. And she goes, he does. Yeah. You know, it gives a whole new layer of credibility. And now... Now he has no excuse yeah. when he's doing bull crap. Now we right? know his name so we can get his attention. Also, he didn't know what red and blue were two episodes ago. He knew. He knew what he was doing. He knew. What a little butthole. It's like when you were asking me, what was it? What did you want off the counter the other day? I don't remember. He wanted something and I started like just pointing to random stuff. He'd be like, hey, can you give me the lid for that water bottle? And I'd be like... Yeah, super, yeah, and he go super no, annoying. and I was like, "Mb Amba, <laughs> no, yeah." Uh, new characters, uh, a slew of them. The mm. the magistrate was a very cool character. Mm -hmm. um, I liked when she uh, died. Did they ever show her dying? I wonder if she just left her there. But uh, the people I'm, overthrew I'm her. I'm sure the people would have killed her. Homeboy, I think they saw her in that collar thing, right? Oh, maybe. I don't know, homeboy, the, the little Asian guy that took a bath and looked dope at the end of the episode. Yeah, the I'm guy sure that knows the, the secret recipe for the noodles. Yeah, he knows what's going on. Um, so standout moment, that was really cool. Standout character, uh, new characters. New characters. Okay, the HK droids. Okay, something that was a cool snag by somebody on the interwebs. Has sharper eyes than I do, saw an insignia, and it's not a, a, a tit for tit uh account of it to quote uh dwight schrute 
Uh, but it's it's something similar. To, no, it, it is. Is it? it? It's it's spot, spot on. on. It's it just dirty. The insignia of For the seventh the fleet. seventh fleet, which is Thrawn's charge, which have been given him specifically by Emperor Palpatine. Yeah. If you happen to order the Orient of the Sombrero T-shirt, you get the. It's basically Thrawn's logo, but it's the thing that you see on the underbelly of the Chimera mm -hmm. and our friend skeleton astronaut. Uh, photoshopped little sombreros of the Orient onto the larger snakes' heads. Mm -hmm. But it's uh, kind of like a more abstract version of that. It's got kind yeah. of three. Well, we also have the Seventh Fleet shirt mm -hmm. available on tpublic.com. We, we awesome. didn't plan to do a merch thing here, but it just keeps being relevant. Uh, we, be, yeah, because we're calling it left and right, bro. Um, so that was really cool. Rate it 1 to 10. Go. I know that there was... Preemptive outrage if I were not to rate this a 10. Yes. Rest assured, it's a 10. <laughs> I feel like I just gave you a dragon pearl. Oh my god. Yeah. There you go. A 10. Adam? <laughs> Come on. Yeah, it's like a 9.8. There's a couple things in there, but it's, it's like. Adam said 10. Adam, Adam said, said 10. 10. <laughs> you said it's your favorite episode of either season so far. It is. It okay. Is. So basically a 10. Yeah. Starframe. Ding, ding. Uh, That's so, 20 bucks to charity. There it is. Whatever you like. Uh, so yeah, 10, 10, 10. Um, loved Adventures it. Adventures of 10, 10, 10. Okay. My favorite thing, the part where we speculate correctly every week. I thought it would be fun if we did an alternative take on this segment. And since it's Adam's favorite episode of okay. all the seasons, we have a questions time with Adam, where Adam can be the voice of the uh, the viewer, and he could ask us questions that he might have that might be a question that somebody else might have. Okay. Easy peasy. Adam, would you like to introduce yourself to the fine folks at home? I'm Adam. <laughs> <laughs> Dope. Questions. Uh, one of the big questions is... When if when and if they get to the the mountain, mm -hmm. um, who actually shows up? That's a fantastic question. You want me to go? It's I don't know. I don't know. She she does mention in passing that there are other Jedi that survived Order sixty six. What would be freaking sick? Quinlan Voss. That's not even what I was going to say. Actually, Crook. C Crook. That would be freaking sick. Dude. Sick. I'm not... This is my second... I know that... <laughs> <laughs> my heart cannot take Dude, if Quinlan showed up, bro. I know Dave Filoni is also a big fan of Quinlan Voss. Mm -hmm. So it's, po it's entirely possible because that species happens to live quite a while. Yeah. So it's possible that it could be Quinlan Voss. I'm all the way there for that. Quinlan's like one of my top five all-time favorite Jedi. Sweet lord. If it was Crook, bro. <laughs> I think it would be way... I th as big of a fan as I am of Quinlan Voss, I think it would be way cooler if we had Crook. Oh, my God. If only for us to sell out of Ori Sombrero of the Orient t-shirts. Dude, I would lose my freaking mind. If they showed up and that sexy, tall warthog with the Sombrero of the Orient showed up... I would be... All the way there for Mama. It. I'd be all the way there for it. Oh my god. Okay, I gotta move on past Crook because I'm getting lightheaded just thinking about if he showed up, bro. I think Crook is an outlandish but viable option. Oh Quinlan my Voss, god. I think, he trained Cade Skywalker in the Legends material. Which is why it would be super sick. And we know that they're looking at those Daggum comics because we talked the other week about how George liked Darth Talon's design. Yep. yep. You sick man. And, uh... <laughs> um, okay, so... In, yeah, prevert. In, in universe people that we know are around. I think Quinlan Voss is semi confirmed to be alive. He's confirmed to have su survived Order 66. Yeah. We don't know between the end of the Vader comic where he's hunting Knowing the Jedi Sheev, and now. I would think it was likely that he would leave him around. Because it Just could be me turned? speculating because in the comics before, you know, it was retconned or whatever, mm -hmm. he was already eyeballing Quinlan as a replacement apprentice. For Dooku. Yeah. So Especially if Anakin couldn't be turned. Exactly. And we know that he turned for a little bit from... Uh, Dark Disciple. My God, there you go. Dark Disciple. Um, yeah, I could see him being around. P. 
People that are the obvious answers are someone like Ezra Bridger. Ezra Bridger. Because if Thrawn is back and the Seventh it's, Fleet is back, yeah, then it's, Ezra's it's back. Ezra. Although he would be imprisoned, is my guess. What about Luke? I here's, don't think they'll bring Luke. I here's think my Luke's thing about big. Luke. Here's one that people are forgetting is that Leia was training as a Jedi. Yeah. And that would be freaking raw. But okay, I, here's, I still think they're both too big. I think they would steal. My it. thing is, yeah. So Jay, we've talked about this a little bit before, but J.J. Abrams said one of the reasons that Luke was only at the very end of the Force Awakens right. was because anytime Mark Hamill was on set, nobody would quit looking at him. Right. It reminds me of when they were doing filming for the season of The Mandalorian, and mm-hmm. Obi Wan, Ewan McGregor, mm-hmm. was on set getting things tried on. Sure. And they were talking about how they couldn't even focus because Obi-Wan was on set. Yeah. And he's not even in front of the camera. Yeah. You know what I mean? So a he was character just showing that's up. as big as Obi-Wan or Luke or right. Leia or... Insert gif of him doing yeah. like this in the speeder. I just think it's... It would become... That would be the show now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. But, yeah. Here's the thing is that how many Jedi does Grogu have to meet and they say, I can't train him. His attachment is too strong. Before we just give up on the whole Jedi thing. Right. So, assuming that he does choose the way of the Jedi, because think, he could go to the top and go, I don't want to do this. I think literally any other Jedi besides Ahsoka is a viable option. Just because mm. Ahsoka's got that strong emotional tie. That to way. Anakin. Yeah, I don't think anybody else had enough of the inside scoop to see... Um, like the absolute worst in the potential that Grogu's packing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like anybody else is going to look at the the hope the rebellions are built on. Uh, but I think Ahsoka is just too close to the situation. You what if I mean? a force ghost shows up? Qui Gon, Qui Gon. Oh, there's another shirt well. that would come off. Yeah, I would I, be I, up here in my skivvies, boy. <laughs> yeah, viewers at home were lucky that Thrawn was mentioned only by name, because I was about to get up here in my in my uh, Christmas with the Cranks <laughs> tanning <laughs> option. <laughs> I wore um, black to make me look lighter. Yeah. So, um, okay, so Ezra is my guess. Ezra is um, a really viable option, especially since Thrawn's already been named. Luke is too big of a character. I'm personally pulling Leia's for Crook. Leia's a little bit too big of a character. Voss would be cool. <sighs> Crook would just send me. I'm I'm there for it. But that would be amazing. He's so big. Yeah. The, the, like, yeah. And, size-wise. And, size-wise. He would just show up and just tower over the Mandalorian and uh, hey. to see him walk off with Grogu in his hand. <laughs> yeah, I can't even imagine. Just That's just sick. Of his hand. Um, yeah, that'd be freaking dope. Ezra's the obvious option. And there is that guy, I can't remember his name, but there's that actor that's been kind of hinting about getting ready for to play Ezra. Yeah, but that could also be for the uh, rumored Thrawn and Ezra show. Right. It is interesting, though, that the rumors for the Thrawn and Ezra follow up is a rumored cartoon, and this guy is a voice actor. Not perhaps. a voice actor. Not a voice actor. No, no, no. He's By not a voice way, actor. Um, for all those, who not that you can't be both, but you know what I mean. At home, I uh, didn't fart. It was the chair rubbing against the desk. <laughs> Lies. That's funny. If I fart, I'll claim it. <laughs> Scout's mm. honor. Scout's honor. Um, but yeah, my thought is, um, for instance. Uh, that actor, God, I can't remember his name, but he uh, he was posting, I'm getting in that orphan from Lothal being trained by Kanan Jarrus kind of headspace. Like very, like, obviously falsely ambiguous about an upcoming Star Wars project as Ezra Bridger. Rhymes with Schmesh Rush Misher. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, no sound alikes. So here's the thing. He, um, there's another one where he was like, seriously, guys, I'm just kidding. And he's like, being kind of, you know, yeah, kind of Lando-y. Uh, but he looks like he's on set, right? Like trailers and stuff around, which like on set of like a filming studio, mm-hmm. which you would be in a in a room if you were recording. So he's hinting towards live action and he's old. Not old, but older than Ezra was. Maybe like what, early 30s maybe? Yeah. So my thought is if Ezra is... I don't know. I don't know how much older Ezra is than Luke. They should be roughly the same age, I would think. Um, what was Luke, like 17, 18 at the beginning of A New Hope? 19. Okay. So then 
So let's say been like roughly the same. Okay, age. So even if he's twenty five. Okay. Let's say Ezra's twenty five at the time of New Hope. Um, Empire is three years later, so twenty eight, and then a year later for Return of the Jedi, twenty nine, and Mandalorian is supposed to be f- five years after that, so he would be 33, 34. 34. Yeah, nailed it. So my thought is, if this guy is going to be a live-action character, Ezra Bridger, mm-hmm. he's playing him for the Mandalorian mm-hmm. because if the character was going to be voiced directly after the end of Rebels, they would just get Taylor Gray to do it again, the guy who did it for Rebels. Right. So similar to how we've seen Boba, and now there's a rumored show of Boba between Return of the Jedi and Mandalorian Season 1 and 2... I can see where they're going to show him in The Mandalorian, and then the show will come to pass, and it'll be bridging that gap between Before A New Hope and yeah. where we see Thrawn. Um, so my thought is probably Ezra, because he's he's a character that people know, but he won't take over the show. If Dave, we... it's not too late. You can still make it. Go. You can do it. It's not too late. Oh, dude, for real. Make it. Make it. Make it. Make it. Do it. Oh, my God. I'm, like the clock. I'm sweating. All right. Any other questions for the fans? I have several. Go ahead. Okay. At the end, we all know Ahsoka asks, where's Grand Admiral Thrawn? Mm-hmm. Why is she looking for him? Is it to find Ezra? Yeah, I, I think, think she's looking for Ezra. I think he's the obvious link to Ezra. Yeah. He's probably... Here's the thing. At the end of Rebels, every I was hopeless because I was rooting for Thrawn, I'll be honest. Mm-hmm. I was like, blow up the whole planet! Oh, yeah. Um, but here's the thing. When those space squid whales show up, the Pergil... What's their name? And they take off with Thrawn's fleet, right? Wherever they end up, Thrawn's whole fleet is there. It's not right. like Ezra and Thrawn one on one. Thrawn's there, the fighters are there, the Still Chimera's in. there, Still all the Star the Destroyers are there, the whole fleet is there, the Death Troopers are there. There's the chair again. So, so my guess is Ezra, she could be looking for Thrawn. And now that the Seventh Fleet has reemerged, obviously right. with those HKs there, there's a good chance that Ezra is imprisoned. Yeah, I even some of the most powerful Jedi, they're slim to none chance of them getting out of that. We know that there's Thrawn, no chance other than like Thrawn Luke is Skywalker. still a very accomplished hand to hand combatant. Um, yeah, in the novels we know that he has contingency plans upon contingency plans. Mm-hmm. And Thrawn Alliances specifically, Vader says, "Are you meaning to tell me that somebody of your?" Uh, military prowess doesn't already have a plan to kill me if it comes to that and he says i've thought of three actually three ways to kill vader to kill vader and let's not let's not overshoot ezra bridger's talents yeah mr staple gun yeah what's the thing for killing people or hanging christmas lights (laughs) yeah obi-wan would be like i don't care for that at all (laughs) That's not elegant. Yeah. Um, so here's the Yoda, thing. Yoda, there's another. This is not him. Um, Nobody? All right, that's fine. No, I, that's funny. Uh, if if they get to wherever they're going... Um, also, my... Man, my questions are... You know, maybe she thinks Thrawn killed Ezra. She's hmm. trying to follow up on it. Maybe. Well, that's one of the reasons why I didn't think... Ezra would be the one to show up on the rock mm. because they're they brought in. Yeah, Thrawn. they still seem to be tied together that way. That makes so sense. I think that that's a great way to lead into. I can three. see where, I can see something along the lines of. Here's the thing, Thrawn's not loyal to the Empire for the Empire's sake. Thrawn He's just his all the way. Is trying to preserve the ascendancy, and the Empire was the most stable pers- beneficiary that he could include. Yeah. What's so, ironic is that. He if has Ezra no and Thrawn sit down... But he's still, like, doing the most for the Empire? Yeah. If they sit down, they really have more in common than they realize, mm-hmm. you know? Especially um, at, at, at the collapse of the Empire. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So, Thrawn could end up being almost like a... What I really almost like... Almost like a good guy in a way. What I really like is that this could be a full circle for Thrawn being where he was at original. So He's that's another like way. He's in command of the Imperial Remnant. That's yeah. where Thrawn was from the start. And I think it would be very cool if they brought it back. Yeah. I can see where if Gideon is a moth, can but not talk, a Grand Moth. Can we talk about how Thrawn would destroy Gideon? In hand to hand or just yeah, overall? All of it. All of it. <laughs> Speaking of Gideon. In any of the ways. Um, I 
have been thinking, and I really do believe that Gideon and Mandalorian will face off, and it will be Gideon with the dark saber versus Mando with the best spear. spear. Mm. And I think that he'll end up killing Gideon this season with the best spear. With the best spear, he'll taking re- the lightsaber, re- becoming the Mandalore. He'll return the dark saber to Bo-Katan. Kills Bo-Katan with the dark saber, <laughs> becomes, becomes the Mandalore. Mandalore. That uh, was going to be my next. Grogu question. turns Sith. Rule the galaxy. <laughs> What's was, the final order? That was going to lead into my next question, which would have been, we have Moff Gideon, we have the Dark Troopers, we have Bo-Katan, we have Ahsoka, we have all this that has happened this season. Yeah. Where does it end? Okay. I would like to draw attention back to the fact that everybody until last week said Bo-Katan. Mm-hmm. She ruined Whatever. it for me. I don't like Bo-Katan, but everybody's saying it. Um, okay. It's okay. I'm not mad at so... you. So... I'm mad at her. It's all good. <laughs> Um, okay. Dude, I don't even know. Because it's got to curtail somewhere before. Wait, what do we have? Three episodes left? We have three episodes left this season, but we know that we're for sure getting at least three, if not four seasons total. So we don't have to finish the whole story, and there's a lot to go, I mm-hmm. feel like. Mm-hmm. Um, I personally don't think Thrawn will show up this season. I think Probably that's not. I think, I think three. he's going to, yeah, brilliant villain for, villain, villain for seasons three and four. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah. Um, I can see... Gideon being defeated by the end of this season. Mm-hmm. I know that, that they mentioned Thrawn, Gideon's small potatoes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Teensy the, weensy potates. I think that the dark, the dark saber will be returned to Bo-Katan mm-hmm. and it'll be kind of like, uh, you, you take this, but you owe me forever. Like they're going to have some kind of, it's a, basically him giving her her position. If he, yeah, if he does he's that. really, he's giving her, leadership yeah it's not just a, the saber it's not like a family heirloom right. he's giving her 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 like you said her position um so that'll be a big deal um i don't think we'll see ahsoka again we may never see ahsoka again in the mandalorian it wouldn't surprise me if we never did um unless it's in the finding of thrawn what if thrawn kills ahsoka that'd be cool Sick. here's the thing a is certain that dominance maybe i mean maybe we know from the Aftermath trilogy that Mon Mothma um, basically demilitarizes the New Republic. And I can see where, th- where Thrawn, Mistake. with the fringes of the Empire, says, well, then let's, let's take this thing back over. Whatever helps the Chiss. So I guess Thrawn stays a villain, probably. Um, by the end of this season, I guess we don't see Boba Fett again? We gotta figure out something with the Mando armor. I think Boba Fett's gonna tie into the Gideon arc. I don't think he's gonna okay. tie into the Thrawn arc. Oh my god. There's still so much that is yeah, we're not playing, tied. We were playing chess in season one, now we're playing three D chess. <laughs> right. Those yeah, freaking you know chess do, boards that are like when you do puzzles and then someone that doesn't know that these are terribly hard gives you like a hey, this is the Empire State Building, it's a three D puzzle. You don't just have to find the pieces, but they build upward. Yeah. Um, I can see Boba being tied into Gideon, but sweet Lord in heaven, if Boba Fett and Grand Admiral Thrawn were on the screen at the same time... <laughs> I can't. My, my heart wouldn't be able to take it. They've already been in the same season. That's ridiculous. Um, Boba wants his armor back. Uh, I can see him being tied into Gideon before Thrawn, like you're saying. Thrawn is big picture. And Boba, at the end of the day, is is a small picture kind of guy. Mm-hmm. Sad to say. But. Well, um, depends on the picture. Yeah. I mean, he works with Vader. But, um, man, I don't know. I feel like we've got to get back to Tython, but somehow Gideon... So you gotta, you got to remember that Gideon has a tracker. Right. I think On the Razor Crest. I think... They're going to, I think the, the showdown is going to happen at Tython. I think Gideon's going to be the main antagonist for the rest of the season. Okay, so what about this? Is Gideon working with Thrawn or will, there's a story in the Bible where <laughs> the prophet and his servant are in the house. Yes. And the armies of their enemies are surrounding them. Right. And the prophet asks the Lord to open up the eyes of his servant and he sees that the greater army is surrounding their enemies. Right. So what if... Gideon surround is has the Mandalorian dead to rights, and then Thrawn surrounds Gideon. 
similar to another analogy, episode one, when they're going through the planet core. Yeah, and always that, a bigger fish. And that fish is attacking them, and that giant yoked underwater crocodile <laughs> human thing just goes... <laughs> what if that happens? I'm sorry, what was the... Uh, what, was... <laughs> what, was the what if... What if... What... <laughs> What if we end up seeing not Gideon working for Thrawn, but what if it's Gideon versus Thrawn? Yeah, I I think <laughs> because Thrawn now officially is the senior official of the entire empire. Correct. There that's is that's no one higher. So No one greater? Yep. And uh, <laughs> I think Thrawn is going to see Gideon as more of a chaotic thing. And Thrawn... It, at the end of the at the end of the day, all Thrawn wanted from the Empire was to a partnership find, to protect the Chiss. Just he in just case, want, he just wanted a back pocket ally. Well, here's what's crazy: is whatever's in man, wild space. They're painting a crazy picture, but I totally trust him to finish it. What? You have an aneurysm. What if Uh-oh. Thrawn takes the Empire? out into wild space, and that makes room for the First Order. He comes back, Mm -hmm. reorganizes the Empire, but Mm -hmm. under himself, Mm -hmm. and takes it out into wild space, and And that's that's how how First Order comes in. Well, that was was a thought that I had, too, because y'all said that he was given the Seventh Fleet from Palpatine. Mm -hmm. So there's already a relationship established there. So if he takes the what's left... He's the only one. As far as he knows, he's it. Mm Mm-hmm. He's, okay. he's a Grand Admiral. He's the only one left. There's no higher position other than so you're saying the what if he goes Palpatine himself. You're saying what if he goes into wild space and that's the beginning of the First Order? No, 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 no. He comes he back. He takes them he to protect takes the Chiss. He takes all the rest of the Empire and leaves with it. Okay. To protect the Chiss. And he's just and, gone. And then the First Order comes out of that vacuum. Okay. We know for a fact, here's what we know from the Aftermath Trilogy is that the reason that the First Order is called the First Order is that right. if the Emperor dies, his First Order is to dissolve the Empire. Right. And these loyal folks, you go to unknown whatever, and that's where exactly. all that happens. So there's got to be that vacuum for the First Order to be established. Right. Here's the other thing, is that Thrawn's thinking here, okay? Here's Thrawn's line of thinking, whatever's best for the Chiss. Okay, Gideon is the smaller villain mm-hmm. compared to Thrawn, but Gideon might know more of the bigger picture if he's like some kind of Sith occultist or loyalist to Palpatine, right? We saw the people in the vats, and we think that's probably the beginning of Snoke. They're trying to clone people with a high midichlorian count and things like that. Right. I don't think Thrawn's in on that. Thra- that is way too valuable of information for Thrawn to know. Right. So I can see where... And I would see where Thrawn doesn't want that to happen. Oh, for sure. He doesn't trust Palpatine. Mm-mm. And he is the kind of guy that... No, I don't. When, <laughs> he's the kind of guy that when they're talking about Death Star, mm-hmm. Thrawn's saying, you're, you're thinking, you're, you're, you have tunnel vision right here. Yeah. The Death Star is not going to work. Yeah. You need to invest in a, a, a ton of money and diversify your assets with the TIE Defender Project. Right. So Starkiller Base... Final Order, all that kind of crap, is that same Death Star basket, yeah. right? So he wouldn't want Palpatine to be back, right? The figurehead being gone and everyone else being even is stronger. So um, I can see where Gideon is defeated and Thrawn leaves, but the scientist, the work doesn't stop Yeah, for the First Order. Right. Well, and there's crap happening on Exegol too, so we don't know what the frig's happening out there. Yeah. Um what do you think's the over under we see Rook live action? I think he's dead. Is he dead? I think Loaf Wolf killed him. Frick. At the end of Rebels. Yeah. Rook would have been cool to see. But we might see Pelion. Mm. I love Pelion. Mm hmm. That would be sick. Um, he's an Admiral by now, yeah? Admiral Pelion? Yeah. Good man. So, man, we'll see. We'll see. But this season, I think that we go back, we focus a little bit more on Gideon. And uh, the guy who is the director for, uh, the, he's the CG director for uh, ILM, Industrial Lights and Magic. Um, he said, I took a screenshot because I was thinking of y'all. He said, y'all are in for a roller coaster in these next three episodes. 
It's going to be great. I'm very excited. So who even freaking knows? Okay, so uh, Mando has Boba Fett's armor. Okay. They hook up somehow. He gets his armor back. Mm -hmm. Becomes Boba Fett again. Mm -hmm. Then they have Bo-Katan, Bo-Katan, whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it. And it comes back to that same episode from season one where all the Mandalorians are working together, together fighting again. So maybe I think I um, would not be surprised if Boba Fett comes and challenges Bo-Katan for supremacy. Really? The way that they've written him does not lend to him caring about leading Mandalorians. Yeah, but he became Mandalore at one point, right? Right. We know but, that that's an existing storyline. We know that Dave and John are fans of the existing storylines. Yeah, but the existing storyline where he becomes the Mandalore is the Mandalore's dying wish is Boba's the one with the hardware and the backstory to lead the people. Right. So, but he's also got double vendetta now, and he would know that his best chance at getting revenge on the Jedi in general would be Pete. You want to hear a wild thought? Of a large contingent of powerful warriors, also known as the Mandalorians. Here's a thought that has something to do with what you're talking about. That pits the Mandalorian against Boba Fett. That Sarlacc pits Mandalorian against Boba Fett. <laughs> <laughs> um, they go to the top of that mountain. Okay. They send up the force signal. Okay. The beacons are lit. The beacons are Gondor lit. Gondor calls for Gondor aid. Gondor calls for aid. <laughs> and Rohan will answer. Mace Windu. Yeah, I've seen that. I don't think there's much to it. Shows up. Hear I think, me out. Hear I me think out. Windu's dead, dead. I think so too. What? But crazier things have happened <laughs> this season. Mace Windu shows up, and that's what draws Boba all the way out. Nothing pushes Boba more than his hate for Mace Windu because of the loss of his father. So. Marching. I like that too. I won't hold my breath for that. I won't either, but that's still a cool concept. I never thought that I would hear Ahsoka Tano ask where Grand Admiral Thrawn was. So yeah, I'm just saying. but I started out this season thinking they would go to Ahsoka who would be the bridge to the Thrawn. We said that explicitly multiple times. Mm -hmm. I don't think, I think Windu's a little bit far-fetched. I think Windu is far-fetched, but it would be sick. Don't rule it out. If it happens, it happens. I just don't think it's going to happen. What if the Jedi's Yaddle? <laughs> she was kicked off the council between episodes two and three. I don't know if she was kicked off. She was kicked off. <laughs> Grievous misconduct. She... <laughs> <laughs> To quote General Grievous. <laughs> so, think about that. If Mace Windu shows up, that's the tie to Boba Fett. If Yaddle shows up, she knows how to care for someone of her own species. Yeah, but like any Jedi. Yeah. Would. Well, I'm just saying. What if Crook was one of the Jedi, Master Jedi, that Who were training? saw? I mean, the way that Crook Grogu. works in Legends is he is very, very wise. He's been around for a long time, and he lives forever. Yeah. And they, they make a joke within the Jedi that he's unkillable because freaking Grievous tried to kill him, didn't work. Order 66 happened, survived. The one Sith rise with Darth Krayt, still there. <laughs> like, he survived everything. So, the... the He will survive. The timeline... Yeah, he will. He will survive. The timeline, he'd, hey, he'd still be... Hey. He'd still be there. Um, man, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, my head's going to explode if we think about this anymore. Everything ties together. So, what if it's one of the Wookiees I from... I stand by my... The High Republic, Wookiee, My theories stuff here. like that. I have one more question. For oh, the High Republic is way far. One I'm sorry. more quick question. I want a quick, short answer. Don't go long. Go ahead. <laughs> he pointed at me. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Um, so Mando has now seen that there is um, more sex in the Mandalorian thing. Mm -hmm. Sects. Sex. Sects. With a C. <laughs> Does he... Go that route and remove his helmet ever. I thought maybe when he was trying to bond with Grogu, he would have taken his helmet off. He seems pretty bonded to it, though, because he's still, if he gives that up, he kind of gives up his quest with Grogu because he's bound to that Mandalorian creed. Right. He can't you know stop I mean? till the quest is done. Right. He's bound um, by that. Well, honor. he did do something already where he was lifting up his helmet to eat in front of that's true. Grogu, and that's, he never would have done that. Because when, in episode one of this season, when Cobb Vanth is like, 
two spotskas or whatever. Yeah, he would. Mandalorian's like, how the f are we gonna drink that? You know, he got two spotska straws. You know, um, so when he sits those two cups down, Mando's like, hmm, and he takes his helmet off, and that's when he loses his cool. Mm -hmm. So even just the lifting of the helmet to drink is a big deal. So I don't know. Personally, I want to see his character develop and realize that Mandalorian is is your the way you live and your beliefs and stuff. But I don't want him to I think if it to comes, completely undo everything. Yeah, I think if it comes to him having to help Bo Katan become Mandalore, mm -hmm. that it would kind of bring him to a halfway point, you know, in what it means to be a Mandalorian as far as being committed without being an extremist. Yeah. Well, the thing is also, yeah, he's kind of, he doesn't understand. I know that having a helmet on at all times is an extremist thing, but like the hate and things like that, mm. that's not really part of who he is. Right. Well, and that seems to have been washed out of Death Watch overall. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Um, that doesn't seem to be very present at this point. And will, it, will we ever see Paz Vizsla again? Oh, God, I wish. I hope so. We'll In see. the armor from... Uh, Season 7 of Clone Wars, preferably. Hmm? What? What are you talking about? Who am I what? talking about? I'm talking about the heavy Mandalorian. Oh, thick boy. Sorry. I'm thinking of the one with the sick armor. Gar Saxon. Gar Saxon. Gar Saxon, the latest... He was in Rebels and he had that two-tone red, yeah, no, no, red no. and white. I don't want that. He's probably dead. I want Season 7 Clone Wars. The cool Mandalorian helmets. sick with the gold horns. Yeah. Well, it turns out that rumors about the armor maybe being a part of Maul is probably true if she's a part of Death the Children Watch. of the Watch. Yeah. You know? So we'll see. Man, so much speculation. So little time. Uh, but there's an episode this week. Yep. And I have no clue where it's going. The Can't beautiful wait. thing is, starting this past episode, we have no clue what's going on because all the trailer footage is gone. Right. Which is amazing. So... Here's to it. We'll see. To it. Um, my predictions, we won't see Thrawn the rest of this season, but eventually we're going to see Grand Admiral Thrawn I think if we see him, in it'll be a um, Boba Fett at the end of episode kind of yeah, reveal. Maybe. You know what I mean? Just like a turnaround. You see somebody in a sleek white uniform, blue skin, jet black hair. Blue black hair. Yeah, but that's like so dark, it's blue black. Those red eyes, though. You get the the glow just out of the side of his peripheral vision. Dude, whenever I was watching the episode, I got like, there's a group chat that I'm a part of on Instagram called Mando Discussion, and it's a subsect of a second group that everyone in this group watches it either like 12 o'clock Pacific time when it comes out or like first thing the next morning. So they're always right on, right on, you know, ready mm -hmm. to go, and. Uh, I wasn't looking at the group chat because we were watching it at the time. And when I went back, it was like, Josiah, are you okay? <laughs> Is Joe is going to lose his cool. What's going on? And they were texting me like, are you alive? Uh, Skeleton Astronaut was like, I was for sure that your shirt probably came off. Um, dude, so many people texted over the weekend. Well, that's um, why I text y'all. Yeah. Because I got up at 6.45 and I watched it. And I, you were like, you need to watch head. it. I won't say anything else. I was like, I wouldn't. Yeah, I said, I said, I'm done. And then I was like, oh wait, but you gotta watch it. One of the most fulfilling things about doing the podcast is when people buy their merch and they show us. That's really cool. Um, not for the buying it of it, but just seeing them yeah. love the show enough to get something. But one, the most fulfilling thing to me, outside of just doing the podcast with you guys, is when people text me and say, "Dude, I'm so happy for Cap." Just since the podcast, because I didn't know who Cobb Vanth was, but now I do, and I saw him in this episode, and nobody would have known who that was. Specifically, this past weekend, I had, off the top of my head, three or four or five people that either, because of the podcast, or like Caleb Hyman, hmm. uh, I said, you know, he's, he has a bit of a commute, and I said, dude, you gotta get into Star Wars audiobooks, dog. And he's like, where do I start? And I said, Air of the Empire. And... Uh, and so he texted me, and he was like, I'm done with the Heir of the Empire, but I feel like there's a lot of loose strings. And I said, yeah, it's a trilogy, bro. So I was like, you need to look for uh, <laughs> the next book. So anyways, people like that texted me and being like, man, I'm so excited and so grateful for the podcast because I would have been excited because of this mysterious character, but I knew who the character was because of the show. Mm -hmm. That's the coolest thing. People well, texted me tonight, when's the review coming out? I have a couple of buddies who you know are big, big, quote-unquote, Star Wars fans. But then they're just like, who's Thrawn? Yeah. And I'm just like, whoa, 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 whoa. And I tried to explain it to them. And they're like, 
okay? But I'm just like, but how are you a quote unquote big Star Wars fan? You don't know that this is a big thing. Yeah. yeah. And and I'm trying to unload to you how big this is, and you're just like, okay. Yeah. You know, so I'm just. It was so rewarding because years ago, read the Heir of the Empire books, read the the Hand of Thrones duology stuff like that. Then he was brought back in Rebels, and he gained some fans. And I remember being like, I was here when it was just books. Um, having the comics, having the figures before they were popular. I remember when I first bought my first, like, the newest super articulated Thrawn, I paid like $12 for it because nobody knew who that was. Now that's like a $70 figure. So just stuff like that of being in the roots, you know? Mm -hmm. And so now, and this also means probably a new figure. So that's bonus for me. <laughs> Right. Um, anyway, but so excited! I still gotta edit these things before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. But um, thank you guys for tuning in. The most amazing episode of The Mandalorian yet, and three tens across the board. So let's keep the streak alive, guys. And we'll be back at you before you know it next week. May the force be with you. And uh, maybe next week. <laughs>